This is three ways to cut dovetails with various methods. Let's go. All right, we're back here at Woodcraft in North Houston, Texas with manager Shay, and he's gonna get, take us through three different ways to cut dovetails. First method, hand cut. What's the benefit of hand cut dovetails? Well, with hand cut, you have the ability to really control your layout, spacing, everything like that. So you get a more custom look. More custom look, more artisan look in my opinion. But it does require a fair amount of practice. And hand cut is, you also get the hands-on, it's handmade, and that adds value in my opinion. Absolutely. All right, so hand cut dovetails, one of the, maybe the drawbacks is, like you said, the skill level has to be developed, which yep. means practice. It's something you've got to develop over time get the muscle memory down, so it, it can take some time. And also the tools required to do that. Fair amount of tools are required, but as far as cost goes, hand tool wise, they're actually a little less expensive than investing in a lot of uh, large equipment. So somebody as a beginner woodworker was starting out and they wanted to make boxes and drawers and things like that, then dovetails would be an option at less cost than say trying to outfit a full wood shop. Absolutely. So what are the bare minimum tools we need for hand cut dovetails. Dovetail saw and chisels. And that's, <laughs> that's about bare as bare bonus as it gets. <laughs> All right, so the setup you have here to make your life easier would be what tools? Dovetail saw, dovetail marker, good set of chisels, marking gauge, marking knife. What brand chisels are you using? I didn't ask that another. These brand. are actually a brand that we carry. Uh, they're file Swiss made chisels. They are a premium line of chisels. They're wonderful. One thing that I understand about chisels is the metal makes the biggest difference because if you buy some cheap ones, like I personally bought some off-brand chisels from Walmart when sure. I first started, the metal's so soft it won't hold an edge. Right. And so metal makes a big difference. The metal is, that's what it's all about. So how well it will hold that edge. Um, and then the premium brands tend to put a lot more effort into flattening the backs of the chisels, which is a necessary mm -hmm. evil. It's nice not having to worry about that as much. Yeah, I have a set of Narex chisels and they're very nice. Yeah, Narex yeah. Richter, Narex is a great the Richter, brand. Richter line of chisels. Right, and the Richters nice. especially, they're, yeah. they're really good. Second method is what you're calling the hybrid method. That involves basically layout and then using the table saw. That's right, so as far as layout goes, you would do it the same way you would lay out your hand cut dovetails, except uh, when I mark the angle for the tails, I mark one angle on the face the opposing angle on the back. Uh, so when you cut a table saw, you are cutting one, flipping the board, and cutting the other. So you have marks on each side so you can reference those. That's right. Beyond that, that's that's the only difference. Are you using like the- The marking gauge. Marking gauge yep. and the tape or no tape? Actually, yes, you will be using the tape. Okay. This is the hybrid method. You've got a jig that you've made. It's fairly simple looking jig. Yeah. And then there's a certain setup you have to do to make this work. Right. So what you want to do is raise the blade all the way up and then we want to tilt it to the left to 10 degrees. This blade is a forest blade. It's ground to a 10 degree left tilt. So that allows you to get right into the corners of the dovetails. That's interesting. So yeah, it's, it's really nice. Uh, you can have forest uh, custom make that for you. So um, is this a custom made blade or can you order it this way? You can order it this way. Okay. Yep, absolutely. So I've set a bevel gauge to 10 degrees. I'm now going to tilt the blade to match that bevel. And that is pretty much it for the setup. Tell us about the jig. How's this helping you? Well, the jig is basically a cross-cut sled. Okay. It's set on to two miter gauges. How'd y'all attach that? Screw from the bottom? Nope. Screw in. The, oh, okay. From most the miter gauges gotcha. have a way of screwing it to the fence. Um, and then it has this here to keep everything together because mm -hmm. you are cutting through this right. portion of it. This is the main part of the jig. Um, over time, tilting the blade mm -hmm. and run out, you'll, you'll widen that channel. So I just attached a couple of sacrificial pieces there to make that kerf as close to. Do you just use three quarter inch plywood and then quarter inch? Yeah, quarter inch and it's actually just uh, attached with double sided tape. Oh nice. It's sacrificial, so this jig you'll get a lot of use out of. I'm gonna lower the blade. I am using my layout line in reference to the kerf to judge where it's gonna cut. Okay. Now it's probably, this kerf is probably a little wider than it would be if I had just put the sacrificial piece on. So it's probably gonna be a little off, but that's mm -hmm. okay. And this is the trickiest part of the setup in my opinion. So I just went through, made a series of cuts, raising the blade 
slowly until I got right to my gauge line. So you just sneak it up on that to get exactly where you want it. Right. That's you right. said that's probably the trickiest part of the setup. That's which took what two minutes or yes. less, right. minute and a half, if that. Yeah. You're left with just a little bit of waste in between the tails to remove, and there is a bit of a gauge line I gotta chisel out here. Uh, so but minor, that would be the same yeah. as what you would do with hand cut. So just minor cleanup there. Yeah, minor cleanup. And on this jig, you don't have to use these miter gauges, correct? You can just make maybe make it a little longer and put some sled runners under there. Absolutely. Or slot runners. Absolutely. Yep, the crucial thing is just having the blade square to the fence. Right. All right, so now that you cut this part, this is the tail board, you cut it on the table saw. What about the pin board? The pin board you will lay out and cut just like we did with the hand cut dovetail. So you can use this to reference to make your other. Absolutely. And what cutting the tail board on the table saw does is it, it saves a little bit of time, but it also ensures that your tail is completely square. Right. It takes any human error out of it. Absolutely. As long as you get that set up correctly. Absolutely. We would like to give a special thank you to the Houston North Woodcraft here for allowing us to come in and make these videos and showing us how to do dovetails the right way. If you're in the area, be sure and stop and check them out or check the link in the description if you're interested in some of their classes they're offering here in the store. Method number three is using this Porter Cable dovetail jig and we brought in specialist Eric Novak to show us how this works. This is probably the most interesting thing to me because I'm a power tool guy. Not one of those hand tool purists over there. <laughs> and so this seems like something I would be more interested in. So I've actually got a, a jig for my jig, so to speak, where I built this box. Part of it is getting it up where it's easier for me to use. You know, I'm over six foot tall. I like having it up where I can see this, see what's going on. I feel like I have better control that way. It also has extra supports both here on the back and here in the front. So if you're doing bigger drawers or things like that, it's really great for helping just support it properly, keeping everything square and tight. Yeah. This jig on the front here is actually an accessory that comes from Lee, who's actually a competitor of the Porter Cable jig, really? which to me is a fantastic add-on accessory. This keeps you from tipping, so when the router is actually on here, it's supported on here and doesn't want to tip like this, gotcha. rounding off your joints. So it helps keep the joints nice and crisp. Now this jig will do multiple things, not just dovetails, correct? Absolutely correct. What all will this do? This will do uh, box joints, it'll do sliding dovetails, and then depending on the package you get with it, it'll actually have a mini dovetail joints and box joints as well. So it gives you two different sizes, which is one of the limitations. You get basically only two possible layouts with this. Uh, so it works great for kitchen cabinets. If you want to get a little more creative, then you need to look at some of the higher end jigs like a lead jig or start doing it by hand or on the table saw or some other method like that. But power tool guy, you want to batch out a bunch of stuff, this is probably the way to go. Absolutely right. Um, you know, I have an appreciation for doing the hand cut ones myself. You know, if I'm doing like a dresser, nightstand, something like that, that's the way I'm usually gonna go. When I'm doing a kitchen, most people aren't gonna pay for that kind of expense right. to do it by hand. And they're fine with the, the more manufactured look. Okay. The other thing that's a little bit of a, a limitation on this is when you're doing other methods, you can do the drawer any depth you want. This is designed to work off of one inch increments plus a quarter inch. Four and a quarter, five and a quarter, six and a quarter are the depth of drawers where this is going to work best at. Doesn't mean you can't do others, but that's where it's going to work the best at. Now how complicated is this to use? Because it looks like there's stuff everywhere, but I would assume it's not that overly complicated. Uh, the setup is a little bit complicated. Not nearly as bad as some of the other brands out can, there. Can we set one up and cut something? Absolutely going to. We're gonna do uh, through dovetails first. Okay. And so first thing I need to do is I need to get a backer piece up. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help prevent some of the tear off from happening. This is the template that you have to use for doing the full dovetails. One side here has the straight slots. One side has the angle slots. The way that I usually teach people how to use this is if it's got a straight slot, mm -hmm. it's got an angled bit. That's where the dovetail cutter comes into play. When you have the angled slots, that's where the straight cutter goes. So you always have one thing angled, one thing straight. That's just one of the 
things that I use to try and help keep everything straight for myself and seems to work well for others. Yeah. So the thickness of the backing material doesn't really matter. It's the width that matters. You want to make sure that it's wider than the piece that you're going to be utilizing. All you do is you get it in. I'm not really worried about the depth. And I go and I lock the depth stop for this. And then I come over to the other side and I make sure that I get the support up to the same level. It has a set screw underneath. And now we're all set. So this is at the, the correct height. I can pull this back a little bit. This one's already set up, but what I want to do is with this first piece is I want to get these centered in the fingers. You can go and you can measure it and get it very precise, or you can also just go and eyeball, eyeball it. it. Most of the time I eyeball it. Once it's set, they're all going to be the same. Now I can slide this backer piece up tight against it, and then I just lock this down right here. We're set to cut out our first dovetail. Part of the setup that we didn't talk about was you've got these buttons over here. This first one here, we're not gonna use for this. This is for half blinds. This one back here is what we're using for our depth on this specific joint. And the way that you set it up is you simply take another piece of your material that's the same thickness, put it in there, and I bring the, the little stop up to it. Gotcha. So now I'm set at the correct thickness. I take my first router. I prefer to use two routers when I'm doing this. I don't like to switch bits in the process. It makes the whole process much quicker. I like using plunge bases versus doing a standard bit. Both work. This is just easier to adjust. It's a lot faster. So I just go and I take this all the way down to that stop. I lock it in and I'm now set. So now I go and I set this in. I make sure that I'm in my dust collection chute. So this dust collection chute actually collects a lot of dust. It's, nice. uh, it's a messy, messy process. Yeah, so the router's always there. And then because of the way that this is designed here with the slot in the middle of this wing, I can leave the bit set to that depth. I don't have to worry about going back and resetting that depth every time I come back. To yeah, that's a good idea. And this jig was designed by uh, Woodsmith. Maybe. Oh, okay. So it's a pretty slick design. So there's your tails cut for you. So now to switch it over, what we need to do is we need to go and loosen this jig up, take the template out. I'm just leaving this exactly where it was, okay. not moving this. So you just rotate that all yep. 180 degrees. These wings have a set screw, so you can set your depth so that you make sure that it's always flush. And you just bring those set screws right up to the bottom of the template. And this slides right back in. And I set it up so that these plastic wings just miss the fingers on the jig. And that slides fine. So now we've got the curved ones. So now we're going to take our next piece not changing our stops on here. The, stay, the stop stays exactly the same place. And the fingers are actually what's offset. Hmm. So now I've got second router here. And this will have our straight cutter. Again, these are angled, so we're using the straight cutter. Yep. And these exactly. are straight, so we use the angle dovetail bit. Yep. So same thing. We bring this over to that same slot. So now we go in here. Now the trick is, because these are angled, the slot is the same size as the bushing. Gotcha. This time it's gonna be a little bit of variance. So I need to follow one side, come out the other side. Again, leave it down until the bit is stopped. bit on the snug side. Sometimes you have to do minor tweaks. You can zero it in a little bit more and maybe get it a little bit more flush, but at some point you're almost chasing stuff more than yeah. what it's going to so be. So when you say dial it in, lower the bit just a little bit? Yep. Make it a little bit deeper of cut? Yep. That'll take some of this proudness off? Right. But like you said, you want some of that there, right? Yeah. This here, that should be a, that's a sign that it should be a little bit deeper. Gotcha. 
Usually a couple of task cuts and you get it. Yeah, so I should say try a couple pieces of scrap just to dial it in. Exactly. That way you get them all pretty close. Exactly. In a nutshell, that's going through doing the through dovetails. Um, just like doing hand cut, I think doing the through dovetails is actually harder than doing the half blinds. Yeah. Um, half blinds, we can do them all in one cut here. Really? This template here is for doing our half blinds. This is for doing our sliding dovetails, as is this. So again, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna center this. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of eyeballing it. I lock it in place. I make sure it's up tight. It's not quite tight, so there we are. So the bottom block here that's helping support it's actually pushing it out of the way. So we're nice and tight up here. If I'm gonna do repeated cuts, I go and I tighten this up. So that just helps me line everything up later on. And now I move this guide over, push it up real tight against it. And you'll notice that there's an offset between right here and right here. And that's what's gonna allow those fingers to come together while we do this all in one gotcha. pass on this one. Mm -hmm. Is this the easier of the method you think? As yes. far as set up and everything working out? Absolutely. Yeah, you can see the boards are offset. So now we were talking about there's the different settings over here on this side. Yep. You notice there's only one here. Oh, I got you. So the other one had one for half blind and for full. This one just has the one for half blind. So this one I get bottomed out there. I'm gonna lock it in. We're all set. And that, that depth is set off the thickness of the material? No, that's actually set as roughly 3 8 And you may have to tweak it in a little bit. And depending on if the joint is loose or tight, you adjust it up or down. Gotcha. This is completely independent of the thickness of the material. So the first thing I do here is I do this scoring cut along the front. And what that does is it creates a shelf to help prevent tear out. Because otherwise what happens with this being out like this, mm -hmm. as I come out, I actually do a lot of tear out. Yeah. And it ends up making it a really ugly joint. Now we've got that shelf in there. Now we can actually go through and cut out the dovetail. Now when I do this, I tend to rotate mm. the router. So I will tend to push in with my left hand and then I'll pull it back out with my left hand so that I'm riding right along the bushing real tight. Gotcha. Some people will say, well, if you're rotating, then you're actually going to be causing it to not be centered properly. I disagree with that because before I set this up, I actually centered this, these centering cones for doing any kind of bushing work is critical. Setup is key. Yep, exactly right. So everything's pretty clean. There's a little bit of fuzzy material right there, but not too bad. And there you go. Nice. Pretty cool. And that's pretty smooth right yeah, there. Yeah, I like that. So that probably that's which one method. I use more. Now this jig is available on Woodcraft dot com i was assuming yes it is and available here at the north houston store yes it is <laughs> all right eric thank you so much for showing us this jig and this is probably the method i would use if i'm cutting dovetail <laughs> yeah it makes it nice and simple and uh and quick all right thank you man you're welcome if you like this video check out the first time i ever visited woodcraft right there click in the box get you the big old virtual fist pump also another one of my favorite videos right there